And we head to the top of the hour, as Christina says. One last look at the grain and livestock trade. It's been an interesting day in the grain trade. Back and forth here. Uh, the trade that doesn't want to seem to put a lot of uh, weather premium in corn here right now. But we've been on both sides, mostly higher through the day. I want to get to the futures in a minute. But uh, also, uh, every Wednesday is our ethanol report day. Weekly ethanol production from the previous week. Let's go to the board and uh, check out what ethanol showed us. Again, second week in a row, below a million barrels per day. This, uh, Last uh, look here at 993,000 barrels per day. That was up from last week, though. Last week, first week in a long time, we were below a million barrels. That was 986,000. Still keeps our four-week average at over a million barrels per day, 1.01 million barrels. And ethanol stocks at 23 million barrels. Again, a lot of eyes on that number. The uh, Previous record was set just during the month of March uh, at 23.7. During one week in March, we were 23.7. We were uh, again climbing back toward that number, 23 uh, million right now this week. Again, as far as ethanol stocks are concerned, to the board then we go. As mentioned, not to trade or at least right now, as Christina says, it's April 19th, not May 19th. So the trade not all that excited to get ahead here and build a lot of weather premium in. We have. Have a good supply coming out of South America here. Uh, that is a factor in here. In fact, Mato Grosso area uh, looking at 26 and a half million tons of production there. And that's an estimate here that was increased from 25 million just uh, in December. Todd Horwich joining us live from the floor. One last look at the grain and livestock trade. Todd, uh, got to go through the valley before you come back up and see the sunshine. And I say that because longer term, you are friendly to this grain market. Uh, good afternoon, Mark. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely friendly. I, again, I'm, I, we're at levels now, you know, corn at 360. I mean, that, and I'm only basing it on June. I know, I mean, on May, we're going to roll over. But right now, just what I'm looking at here, 360 is a great spot to step in. Mm -hmm. Soybeans, you know, around that 940 level, right? We've been above that. We've been able to hold it. You know, we broke the 10. We looked for 940. Now we're there. So now we're looking for the other way. And, of course, wheat, we're right where I want to be a buyer. I, I think through the year, we'll see money flowing in here from alternative investments. I think that the dollar is going to be weaker. There's a lot of factors I think will push these higher, and I think the demand will pick up as well. Yeah, we're all looking at all that here as you speak, and the dollar is a little bit higher today, but still just below the $100 level. You look for that to longer term, the dollar, as long as we're on that, uh, down there in the mid-90 range. Oh, yeah, I, I would expect 94 is my minimum target to the way down and, and possibly lower than that. So, yeah, I would expect to see the dollar lower, and I would expect to see, again, the, the equities lower, which brings more money into the alternative of investment space as well, which in this case would be the grain markets. And of course, that would push prices for us as well, which would always be a good thing. What would be the cause for the dollar to weaken that much here, Todd? You know, I think as we see often in markets, Mark, the markets overshot what they were really worth when they were basing it on these interest rate hikes. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they get too many people bought too much and got too long and they're trying to get themselves out. Uh -huh. And that's what pushes the markets down farther than we think they're going to go. And that's what I think will happen here. All right. Let's go back to corn here. You think it's a level right now. You're, you're friendly longer term. So if you're a producer, certainly if you have storage, you don't need to sell right now the old crop. Keep it for a little while longer. Is that right? Abs absolutely. I, I I, I, listen, I think we're going to see well over $4 December corn. I think if you can hold, again, if you're not paying for it, then you can yeah. hold it. If, you, if it's going to cost you, then you have to evaluate yeah. the cost versus what you're going to get. But I think you're going to get a much better price. I mean, I, I would expect to see 380 in, in pretty quick time here in the next in the next setup. Just so, again, I mean, talking it, about the May contract. All right, uh, Todd Horwich, live from Chicago. We'll take a break. One last look at the livestock trade and his thoughts there as well. We continue after this. Clock says 10 minutes to the top of the hour. That means time for a livestock update. Let's go to Chicago and get that from Todd Horwich. Todd, you are friendly longer term in the grain trade. What about we've been higher uh, nine days? Looks like it might be 10 days in a row for live cattle. Uh, you still friendly here? We've got more room to go? 
Well, I'm, you know, they may go higher. They're going without me. I'm, I'm not. Fr I'm friendly long term here. In the short term, I think that they're well overvalued. Okay. I think there's a lot of things that are kind of confusing here, and overall, I think there's a squeeze going on. And of course, with April coming off the board and with cattle on feed on Friday, I think that's going to change a lot of these dynamics. And I think they're they're well overpricing what the real value is here because if you look out into the future, we're in that backwardation formation, and that's never very bullish longer term. Yeah, you got well, June. At 115, as we know, that's been well below the nearby contract. August, even below that, at 112. I'm going to get. You, I'll get the numbers here for those tuning in on uh, RFD TV and Rural Radio. But I want to get your thoughts here uh, before we take a break with you and the hog trade. Uh, on the other side, hogs are lowest since mid October and still lower today. Uh, you know, it's amazing, and I, I stepped in and tried to buy some today and, and, and looked at the $70 level. I, I think that's a pretty good spot to take a chance. I think the probabilities are high that we have seen the lows now, and we can look for higher prices. I think overall, you want to look to be uh, me. I'm, I'm selling beef, and I'm buying hogs right now, as I would see it right now. But I think at the end of the year, they're both going to do well. Yeah, you see the entire agricultural sector better by the end of the year. Yes, I do. I, I'm, I'm very bullish for the for the entire going pat. Once we get through and sort out some of these issues, I think need to be taken care of. I get bullish the whole complex. Yeah, we'll know more about our trade, et cetera. Get a new, uh, I know, a, a, a USDA Ag Secretary in place uh, next week. Uh, looks to be confirmed. That'll also be a factor. Todd, we're going to have you back tonight and wrap things up on our Rural Evening News. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Always good to visit. It's Todd Horwich. BubbaTrading.com is the website. All right, here are the numbers. One last time. These are live from Chicago, right? Uh, Todd turns around. He'll be seeing the same numbers I'm giving to you right now. April live cattle up $1.20, closing in on the 128 level, 127.98. They may all be over a 128 by the close here. Still have another 20 minutes or so to trade. The June more active and it's higher. It wasn't higher all day. Went down to 114.85, almost a dollar above that. In fact, more than a dollar above that. Now 115.95. And that's up 30 points. So some suggest that that Fed cattle exchange had a lot to do with that. Though if you had not heard, uh, out of 4,400 cattle, they sold about 700, but they did bring steady firm money over the last week in the cash. 129 for a lot of cattle that did sell in that Fed cattle exchange. Feeder cattle are higher here as well. The May feeders are, and they weren't higher all day either. May, for example, down to a low, 138.48, and now they are uh, nearly uh, two dollars above that at 140. 30, 140, 30 on the May feeders, and that is up 22 points. August up 77 points, just short of 143. Check that beef cutout we got at midday. It was a mixed trade there at midday with the choice a bit lower, 91 cents, select a bit higher, still about the highest since late March. And then our hog futures, uh, again, lowest since mid-October and lower again on the day. Todd Horwood says he thinks 70 is a place to step in here technically to own these June hogs. They're down a dollar forty at seventy ten right now seventy ten and a quick look at our pork cutout arrow still lower there uh, at midday and we'll see where we close on the day but the carcass down thirty six cents Jano keep an eye on that pretty wide range taking place it today. was an interesting day here all right thank you very much. You